There are a bunch of great tools that us GMs can use to make prep for our games a little bit more awesome. Here are some of my favorite tips and tricks, and we're starting right now. There are a mess of tools available to the modern GM, both online and offline. Some of them good, some of them less than. We should use the tools that fit our particular needs the best. Here are some of the tools, tips, and tricks that I use to make my game a little bit more awesome. Hopefully, something in here will help your game be a little more awesome too. This is not intended as a tutorial. I think the needs of your prep are going to depend on your game, your table, and your preferences. I will do more videos in the future where I record my own prep and where I talk philosophy and go through my own process and my own set of details, which I think is a lot more useful. We won't be talking about pre-made adventure modules either. There's already a lot of good information about that online, and if we're honest, it's not that much more difficult than preparing your own content. It is a lot more reading though. This is also not a talk about world building, although a lot of these tips and tricks will certainly apply. We will nibble around the edges a little bit, but we're going to leave that as a topic for future videos. Want to know when I upload one of those videos? Subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. And boy does it feel weird to say that. This discussion is in three parts. First, we will talk about fantasy tools. I know the most about these because I've spent the most time with them. Second, we're going to talk about sci-fi tools. When you run a sci-fi game, you tend to need a lot more details, and having good tools will help with that. Third, we're going to talk about general tools and tips and tricks, stuff that's genre and system agnostic. So let's begin. First up, we have Worldographer, which is a fantastic map making tool. It should be over here on the right, and we'll go through some of the features in just a bit. If you hear people call it Hexographer, it's because that's what the old version was called. One of the best things about this tool is it will generate a random map for you. Here's one that I generated just now. It is complete with rivers and seas and volcanoes and polar regions and stuff like that. I really want to know what's happening on this volcano. Here's that same map with some randomly generated nations. A lot of people, myself included, find it much easier to start with something and then modify it to our needs than it is to start with a blank canvas and start painting. Those of you who caught Matt Colville's collaborative streams will be very familiar with this operation. This version of the tool can build world maps, it can build dungeon maps, it can build city maps. It gives you all kinds of tools you can draw with too. But it's got a superpower. If you load your map into Roll20 and fiddle with it until you get the hexes to line up, you can use the Roll20 measuring tools to measure your map, which is way easier than doing it by hand. For instance, I can tell that it is 336 hexes, sorry, 336 miles, 14 hexes between Cedarwood and Vendrigo. And it is 288 miles or 12 hexes from Cedarwood to Silverleaf. I don't have to count on the map anymore. That's brilliant. Next up is random name generators, which I realize people talk about a lot, myself included. I find these invaluable. My players are very fond of finding some random person that I've never thought about in the world that they just happen to be passing by or somebody I made up on the spot. It can be really hard to come up with a good name on the fly. And if you want to hear more about how I solve this at the table, blam. The good news, right now, we're in prep time, and all we really have to do is go to a site and roll up some random names and pick the ones we like. This is the one that I like, at least for fantasy names, and I'll stick a link in the doobly-doo so I don't have to read it off to you. And it's worth noting that this is way more complicated than it was when I started using it years ago. Most of the things I like are in pop culture. Uh, the one I like the most is pop culture, Lord of the Rings, Sindarin, for all that elf name goodness. The other ones I like are pop culture, Wildstar, Orin, pop culture, World of Warcraft, Torin, and pop culture, Mass Effect, Asari. And yeah, I'm telegraphing my appendix in. What of it? Next up is Don John, which is full of a bunch of random generators that I happen to like. The ones I like in particular are the random quest generator, the random inn generator, the random adventure generator, and the random town generator shown here. These four are just scratching the surface. This site can do a ton of stuff. It might be worth it for you to take a deeper look and try to figure out if there's anything in here that you can use. As a for instance, I learned that it has a Markov name generator, something that I totally would have used if I knew it existed. I could go on and on and on about all the cool tools I found online that I don't use. I'll let you do your own Google searches to figure it out though. And if you find something really cool, come back and drop us a thing in the comments, will you? Next up, moving away from the automated and online tools, we have the 5x5 method, which I will link to in the doobly-doo. This is a basic content organizational tool in which you take your adventure or your campaign or whatever, and you break it into five distinct quests. Then define for each of these quests five different steps of what they have to do to finish the quest. Most people use some variation of this, whether they realize that's what it's called or not, because uh, I think it is a very intuitive thing. I've used variations of this for years. Last up in the fantasy division, but by no means least, are fronts from award-winning tabletop role-playing game Dungeon World, which you can get for free. 
fronts are basically a solo minigame with very minimal mechanics around the forces of darkness that are moving in the background, say for instance the forces of Mordor in Lord of the Rings. If left unchecked, terrible things will happen to the player characters and maybe the world. I have found that these work best when I can reveal these events at appropriately dramatic times. But what if we took this one step further, and instead of building a mini game around it, what if we built a bigger game around it, with crunchier mechanics, to run each of the factions that run the world? Wouldn't that be cool? Luckily, someone has already answered this for us. Stars Without Number solves this with a solo play mini game faction system. Stars Without Number is also free. It can be easily hacked to your particular needs, and the results can be very, very interesting. As a game master, I love these kinds of systems, because I like to be surprised by what falls out of the mechanics. The more surprising the event is, the harder it is we have to work to justify it in-universe, and the more memorable those events tend to be. And if you want to see a version of this taken to its logical conclusion, or past its logical conclusion as the case may be, they're doing a crowdsourced play of this game for Far Verona. As awesome as this system is, it is not without its downside. It is really complicated, with a lot of record keeping. What if we had a tool to generate this stuff for us? Enter Sectors Without Number, a free website where you can generate your own sector without rolling a bunch of dice. This is super useful for sharing with interested parties like your players. I'll put a link to the one that I generated in the doobly-doo. And if you're going to play along at home, I highly recommend using the Google Sheet that I use. It will save you a lot of sanity, and it gives you a place to keep all of your records all in one place. And trust me on this, you're going to want to keep good records. Moving on. For sci-fi games, I prefer to use real-world names where I can. For that, I use a different name generator. You can use baby name generators or whatever you find online, or use your fantasy name generators if you prefer. It's up to you. Most times I will pick a few cultures and roll with those. I would prefer to go deep rather than wide. If it's more than a few cultures, I'll get lost anyway, and that's not cool. If accents are your thing, this gives you fewer to practice and fewer to get good at, which is also a bonus. Personally, I try to avoid monocultures because I think they're boring, but it's up to you. It's your game. And now we're on to the general tips and tricks. The best tip I give across anything, not just this stuff, is to gain proficiency in your tools. If you're in question, start with something simple preferably something free. Then when you hit its limits, you can move on to a better one. In this way, you'll better know what you need before you drop money on a thing. Try to learn the medium though, not just the UI. The next tip is to focus on productivity. These are tools, not lifestyles. Any kind of frictions in this process will make everything else suck. That means that you are less likely to do this thing, and it will take longer to do the thing once you sit down to do it. And we don't need prep to take any longer than it already does. Proficiency will set you free. Of the generic tools that I use, I will mention but two. The first is Paint.net. It is free. It is simple. It still does a lot of stuff, but it is not as cool as Photoshop or a more full-function tool. It has a clunky UI, but it is good in a pinch. Most of my graphics are made here. Also, it's free. The other generic tool that I will talk about is LibreOffice, which I have a love-hate relationship with. It is also free. It is basically a full suite of Office tools like Microsoft Office. It does a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, it is not very simple, it has a super clunky UI, and it is not always stable, but it can read almost any document from any other suite. I have learned to use this tool, so all of my NPCs, handouts, and sheets are made here. And if you want to see examples of my handouts, blam. Here is the most important tip or trick or whatever I will give on any of these videos. Try really hard not to over-prepare. There is a weird expectation in our hobby that we will build everything. But that's crazy. Everything is too much, and it doesn't leave us any space to explore. You don't have to build anything you don't want to. I give you permission. But if you're going to do a bunch of world building, like me, start with the area that's around your player characters. More than that is probably overkill, and you don't get to be sad about it if they don't ever see that stuff. This is from a guy who drew an entire city and wrote a 24-page handout at the beginning of the campaign. Not enough prep is preferable to too much prep. If you over-prepare, you are more likely to forget the important details when you need them. You're also far more likely to get lost in your notes. And take it from someone who knows. Few things will kill your pacing, like fiddling around in your notes for five minutes. I try to keep everything on one or two pages so I can find things. Better improvisational skills will also help you need to prepare less. But that's a different video. All that said, what works for me may not necessarily work for you. So figure out what works for you and refine from that point. Experiment some to see if you can find something better, and think critically about the tasks at hand. We want to optimize that stuff relentlessly so we can spend less time on the dumb stuff so we can have more time with the fun stuff. A bunch of small improvements can add up to a big improvement over time, and in that way we can spend less time on prep and have more time for fun. 
Got any tips and tricks to make prep better? Drop them in the comments below. I hope you found something useful in here that can help your prep time be a little bit more awesome. But that's enough for one video. Shoo, I'll see you on Sunday.